It was about two weeks ago here on the feed, we talked about how a tropical wave coming off Africa would be the one to watch if it could survive all of its hurdles, get into the Caribbean, look out. And that's exactly what happened. And I think as we look back at this hurricane season, Melissa is going to be the storm that defines the 2025 uh, hurricane season. You can see the track, the only hurricane and only named storm that made its way into the Caribbean so far this season. I mean, you take a look at, look at all of the storms in the Atlantic. At the current time, only one named storm made landfall. That was Chantal. 13 named storms, five hurricanes, and of the five hurricanes, I mean, you've had four major hurricanes and three Category 5 hurricanes, and of course, we believe that this was a subtropical storm, certainly provided the impacts along the Carolina coast. So the, uh, as we take a look at Melissa, let's review. There's a couple of ways that you define the strength of a hurricane here. Wind and pressure. Let's do pressure First, from a pressure standpoint, 892 millibars makes Melissa the third strongest storm in the Atlantic on record here. You can see some of the storms that it uh, was able to uh, tie here, the Labor Day hurricane. That is still the strongest hurricane ever to make landfall in the United States, a pressure there of 892 millibars. All right, how about the wind? Well, it's tied in second place with 185 mile per hour sustained winds, only Allen had higher winds, 190 set back in 1980. So the question remains now, what next? As we get out of October, I don't think there's any more storms for the next couple of days. So we talk about November. Long-term averages suggest that you get a storm every other year in uh, November. It could be a tropical storm or a hurricane, but recently we've had a storm almost every year. Now, where do you look for storms during the month of November? Well, a couple of areas. Let's first talk about the early part of November. Sometimes you could still get tropical waves coming across Africa. This would be very early in November. But by and large, the African wave train is about over. Now you start concentrating on homegrown development. How do we get that? When we get a dip in the jet stream far south, it could interact with the warm waters of the Caribbean or the Gulf, and that's how you get development. And, and it's interesting when you look at the middle to latter half of November, that's where you typically start seeing development here. Sure, you can get a storm or two out here in the Atlantic, but certainly there's no impact on the United States. So it's the Caribbean we uh, look for development. And oh, by the way, with westerly winds getting more and more pronounced across Texas and the Central Gulf Coast states, the area to watch for direct impacts is typically going to be South Florida, maybe the North Carolina coast. There could be a close impact, but it's typically Flo South Florida and the rest of the uh, Gulf is typically shut down. All right. So what's going on right now? Uh, let me show you this. Let me show you the water vapor loop here, and, and it will show you the state of the Atlantic uh, basin moving forward here. We begin, you know, we always talk about two things, dry air, wind shear. W waters are still warm enough. I'll show you that in a second. But right now, you do have some pockets of dry air here in the Atlantic. Notice where you do have some moisture in the Southwest Caribbean. That's going to be a common theme. How about wind shear, current wind shear? And this is just quite typical for the uh, month of November. L look at the strong wind shear. Across. Let me get out of here for a second so you could see it off Africa. So any of these tropical waves coming off Africa are gonna be dealing with this west wind shear. They most likely will not be able to survive. You will note though the one area right in here in the Caribbean, the light pink showing you less wind shear. So that's what it looks like now. How's it gonna change? Well. I want to show you this, some of the modeling, and, and this is what the feed is all about. I want you to see the products that I look at, and of course, everything can be found on the AccuWeather Pro site here. Here's our shear map here, and let me give you your bearings. This is, this is the west coast of Africa. Here's the United States. Here's Florida. Here's Cuba right here. Here are the Lesser Antilles. Note as I go forward, these yellows and reds, that means you have very high wind shear. This is next week. Watch 
watch as we go forward into Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Look at all of the wind shear. Again, here is Florida here. Here's the west coast of Africa. The entire Atlantic Basin is pretty much shut down because of the wind shear. You see the dark reds? That's wind shear. Nothing will survive. Even as we get beyond that, the wind shear is high. But notice in here some blue. Let me give, give you a close-up of what the Caribbean looks like here. So this is starting on Sunday. So here we go. Here's Florida right in here. Then we have Mexico. This is Central America. Here's Cuba. A lot of lower wind shear in the Caribbean beginning on the first week in uh, October here, um, November. And look at as we go forward here. This is the 4th. This is Wednesday the 5th, the 6th. So through the 6th, the 7th, well, after about the 5th, you start getting wind shear, but you can see there's low wind shear in here. The question is, the question is, is there anything that could develop in that area? What does the pattern look like? Well, I want to show you this. As we get into next week, let me show you this. This is European and the American model also say the same thing. Look at where this high pressure system is. This is early next week, Tuesday, Wednesday. Where do you look for development? Underneath the belly of the upper high, that's the American model. Look at the uh, uh, the, G the European model. Look at the American model. Look at that. There's your high, and it's sensing some energy in here. That's the area to look at moving forward here. We're not out looking an area yet, but I'll tell you what. If we're going to get development in the Caribbean, anywhere in the Atlantic Basin, this is the area to watch moving forward here. The time frame on this is going to be as we get in the early November. If we get development, that's where it would be. And as always, you have to keep an eye on South Florida. And that's today's feed.